In the United States, 1,500 people die of cancer every day. It's the second leading cause of death behind heart disease. With an increasing rate of new cases each year, these numbers look only to continue growing as our bodies process the toxins around us. But there's a lot we can do to prevent this disease. How we can avoid cancer one day at a time. Next on Living Smart. Welcome to Living Smart, a show designed to help you get the most out of life. As a primary care physician and patient advocate, Dr. Lynn Elrich helped countless individuals navigate their way through cancer's diagnosis. After 15 years, she left her private practice once she realized she could have more of an impact by educating the public about lifestyle practices that could reduce the risk and recurrence of cancer. Today, she travels across the U.S. and the world to lecture cancer survivors and their families about nutrition and prevention. She's currently a medical journalist for the New York Times. She's also the author of a lung cancer blog, the national award winning book, Avoid Cancer One Day at a Time, and is currently writing Keeping Breast Cancer at Bay. Great to have you on Living Smart. Thank you so, so much so for wonderful. having me, Patty. And I know you're a fun person, so we're going to start with something fun you can do to deal with cancer, and that is decorating your home. Decorating your home. People ask me all the time, what can I do to lower my risk of cancer? And they're, they're expecting some awful, mundane, horrible <laughs> thing that, <just laughs> that they have to do. Right. That they're going to have to do. But you know what? I learned traveling. Um, I thought I knew everything about cancer prevention or right. everything I could get my hands on. And I was lecturing in Austria. And we were trying with a group of us to figure out why their risk of some childhood cancers was lower. Right. So we did our own uncontrolled trial just looking at their lifestyle, touring homes, touring schools. Right. And we went through some of the schools, and I thought I was in a Carlton Ritz. These classrooms were filled with ficus and ferns and palms. Beautiful and I thought, flower and, you beautiful know, plants flowers and, plants. and plants. You know, maybe it's stress. And I talked to the schoolmaster, and she looked at me very seriously in one of the schools and said, we're doing it because of your research. And we have spent a lot of money. Um, PhD scientists at NASA have studied houseplants and their ability to absorb carcinogens in the air. Amazing. And we know indoor air, the EPA tells us, indoor air is much worse than outdoor air. Right. And a simple house plant, a spider plant in a room can absorb about 90% of the indoor air carcinogens. That's amazing. And how simple is that? You have a friend that's worried about cancer prevention and has fa breast cancer in her family and you want to get her a gift. A simple house plant. Uh, I mean, simple how fun is that? I, I, that's great because I kill all the plants that I have at home, <laughs> but I have this one plant that will survive. And uh, <laughs> so I'll make sure I'll keep that plant. What about the bedroom? What do you, should you do in your bedroom to lower the risk <laughs> of cancer? I love this question. <laughs> and I asked this recently speaking. And it was so fun because I said there's something you can do in the bedroom that lowers your risk of cancer. And... A very timid 19-year-old man stood up, about 19, and said, S sleep? And a woman, and I'm sure in her 90s, jumped up and said, I think it's sex. I think it's sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's very and, healthy for you to have and sex the to prevent cancer. both. Good clinical studies have shown both a healthy amount of sleep and a healthy sex life can reduce your risk of cancer. That's, well, what is considered a healthy sex life, though? A healthy sex life? Because for some people, you yeah. know. And they've actually done that with men and right. prostate cancer. And there is a number. It's in my book. You can find it if you <laughs> Google it on the number in the study of, they did on Harvard students okay. um, that seem to lower how, the risk of prostate times? cancer. Okay. But that's a breast cancer prevention one, too. Um, okay. Oxytocin is released. Um, Wonderful. During, Wonderful during thing to know. And, See, yeah. what a great thing. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that also let's go into the diet. There's a cancer prevention diet. Everybody thinks, oh, no, I have to go oh. on a diet. It's terrible. But there's easy things you can do, right? There's easy things diet. you can do. And make it fun. And if anybody's wondering where to start, I'll say find a Mediterranean cookbook or Google some Mediterranean oh, recipes. Lovely. I mean, it's not just cancer prevention, but the Mediterranean diet has been shown to reduce the risk of death from almost all causes. And make it fun. That's you know, right. Sometimes coming up with different foods you're not used to cooking. Um, I really like having fun, especially when my children's friends come over. I like cooking things, and it's like, what do you suppose this could be? Right. And food's got to taste good. We're not going to eat it if it doesn't taste good. Um, so we've got to find th ways to incorporate a lot of In these, your everyday life. Foods, and, and a Mediterranean yeah. diet is more fruits, more vegetables, more fish, right? Right. And olive Olives, oil -based. olive oil, yeah. wine. It's delicious. <laughs> okay. Sleep. 
Uh, we don't pay enough attention to sleep. We are sleep deprived in America, and, the, and yet that is very important to prevent cancer, isn't it? It is so important. And I think about sleep. We look at breast cancer, and less than seven hours of night, sleep a night is correlated with an increased risk of breast cancer. And what I really think about with that is my cousin who had breast cancer, died very young with breast cancer, and she was the type of woman that did everything right. The reason I set out to write this book in the first place is because I saw too many people that were doing everything, everything right, right and getting cancer anyway. But she was the type that compromised on sleep, and she was doing it being a loving woman. She's the one who would stay up till 2 in the morning writing a letter to somebody that was sick or in need or you know, really cutting the corners there. But that's one thing with women, if they're looking at how can they reduce their risk of breast cancer, think of yourself. Take care of yourself. Right. And it's, we right. don't do that as women enough. And, and minimum amount of sleep healthy would be seven hours, minimum. Better minimum. eight, correct? Correct. Better eight. Okay, correct. I do, I do seven studies. And, or eight. We, we are very concerned about our children, and if we could teach our children to prevent cancer, we wouldn't have this epidemic. So let's talk about how cancer proof our kids. Cancer proof our kids and that's where we've got to start. We know a lot of these t things take many many years and what's happening to them in childhood adolescence is going to affect how healthy they are when they are 40 or 50. Number one thing is involve them. Um, I have one of my children, a boy that's 15 that likes making cancer prevention recipes because you make it fun and entertaining. Okay. Um, but another thing is live it. If they see us going through our house looking and watching for chemicals, different things, they're going to live it because our kids don't listen to what we tell them. They don't listen to our words. They look <laughs> at our right. actions and they want right, to Right, right, right. They see your actions, do. right. Yeah. Let's talk about how, how we can save money with cancer prevention tips. This is so fun. And when I was writing, I got horrified when I was writing this book. And I went through all of my cupboards, went through the garage with a list of carcinogens, which I don't recommend to anybody. You'll drive yourself nuts and stress isn't good. Um, <laughs> but by the time I eliminated all the chemicals that I was concerned about, I ended up cleaning my home with vinegar, baking soda, right, lemon juice, which are natural and things olive oil. To do. And you know what? It's simplified life. It's cheaper than all of these other chemicals. Um, so we think of adopting this lifestyle is so much work, but it can really simplify our lives and save us and money. And it's a lot cheaper. Yeah. Let's talk about something that's, that's very basic, basic things we can do, like sunscreen. People don't realize how important that is. Basic things like sunscreen. I, I think we get so caught up in, we see the advertisements and th we think this is a cure-all. But the risk of melanoma, which causes at least 75% of um, skin, cancer, skin yeah. cancer fatalities, the risk was 1 in 1,200 in 1935, before they had sunscreen. And now it's less than one in a hundred. So some of these risks are going up. Sunscreen is not the total answer. Okay. Um, in fact, it can block some vitamin D. But what did they do before? They were careful. What did they, people do before? They avoided going out and getting sunburned. If they were a little pink, they'd come in. Okay. Um, and actually, they were sent outside to get their vitamin D. They'd cover up. But we've forgotten a lot of these common sense things. That's cheaper anyway, too. That's right. <laughs> now, now, as a breast cancer survivor that I am, um, vitamin yes. D is very important. Tell me about vitamin D. Vitamin D is very important. Is that for all and cancers it, or just breast cancer? I believe all, all cancers. Okay. We're seeing studies back and forth, and you'll see one study kind of poo-pooing it. Uh, we know people, even the South, um, about 50% of people are deficient in vitamin D. Um, and for even for survivors, we've looked at survival. And if you go from the north to the south across the United States, survival for cancer increases. Um, Interesting. And Do we know why? We don't. Vitamin D is one vitamin of the big theories of sun yeah, exposure. Because, of um, course. It's too cold out up there in, in Minnesota. It. Yeah, but that's one thing that I, it, it, cancer survivors come up to me often and say, what's that one thing I should ask my doctor? And, and I have a whole list, but it's like, have, have they checked your vitamin D level? And very talk important. To you about it. Very important. Yeah. What about aspirin? I, I just read recently. I know aspirin's good for, to keep uh, heart disease away once a day, but what about breast cancer, or, or uh, not just breast cancer, cancer in general? I read that it's good to take an aspirin a day. You so know, it's this two is, for the well, price oh, of one. An aspirin a day for cancer prevention is something you should talk to your doctor about. Okay. I mean, it's, it's all these risks and benefits we have to weigh. We know that some people get gastric hemorrhages and bleed from aspirin too. Um, the thing we need to look at is a recent study came out and it showed a 20% reduction in cancers, several cancers, with an aspirin a day. Um, in that study it was people who took it religiously daily and didn't forget for five years. Well, which is tough, um, huh? So what I've done, and, and we haven't really researched it a lot, so I looked at the heart disease studies and it, an aspirin a day can reduce the risk, but if people take it a while and stop, they get this rebound effect and it increases their risk. 
So I'm so a little you have to make afraid. It this, you're afraid it's, that it's, yeah, yeah. That they're they're going to start taking it and stop right. taking it. So if you decide to take it, first of all, talk to your doctor. Talk to your saying, doctor, and, and you have to take and it for the rest of your life. Be committed. Okay. I mean, it is. It's, right. If your Very doctor thinks that the risks outweigh, you know, the benefits outweigh the risks. Well, I already started, yeah. so we'll see. <laughs> uh, mammography. Very controversial recently because of the studies that were done, um, I guess, here in the United States. And the fact that in Europe, women start doing mammography at age 50, where we start at age 40. Yes. And the, st and the European studies are interesting when they, you know, survival. They're talking about there's a benefit if you do them between 50 and 70 every two years. And, you know, we have, we've had a lot of different recommendations here. I think this is another one that if you look at the U.S. or if you look at Europe, we're talking statistics. We're not talking mm -hmm. you. We're mm -hmm. not talking me. Um, right. We have different family histories. We've got different risks. We have different motivations to try to lower our risk. And I think it's, that's where you need a really good primary physician or naturopath that can really help you discuss you know, what, what's, what's best for you. Maybe I, you're somebody who shouldn't be having one. Maybe you should be having an MRI and something more aggressive. Exactly. I, and you talked about, you know, you have to interview your primary care physician and decide which one you want. Yes, you do. Right? And people don't realize that. We don't pay attention that. to that. Primary care physicians, it's like interviewing a plumber. Right. I mean, yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> they're good plumbers and bad plumbers. There's good plumbers and so bad you gotta plumbers. Get the good and, one. and you want one that listens and takes the time and, and can treat you like their best friend that exactly. has to be a doctor. And yeah. That's awesome. Let's talk about um, the five most important things to reduce the risk of developing cancer. And the first one you have here is the one that's so hard, which is be lean. <laughs> I know. Let's be, talk about that. Be lean. <laughs> and that be lean, um, American Institute for Cancer Research right now, that's their number one recommendation. And it's be lean as possible without being underweight. Um, very hard. But we know right now, we look at uh, tobacco is causing um, cancer, but smoking and obesity are running head to head as the leading cause of cancer right now. Obesity is expected to pass. Um, and, and actually was last year. So it's, it's very, very important. And you talked about how we don't need, to, you just, we just need to move. We don't, again, fun. We have to make this fun. Being lean doesn't have to be horrible. It can be fun. No, it can be fun. Oh, we had more fun talking about this. And you can dance when you can clean your house. And, <laughs> and I love the study we talked about with breast cancer prevention where they took women who worked out at a club or recreationally and versus domestic exercise and and domestic exercise lowered breast cancer the most and domestic exercise is vacuuming and washing the windows and, and it doesn't around have your to home. be terrible you can just <laughs> no, crank up the no. music and, and clean no. the house uh, the second one be the environmentally aware let's talk about that environmental awareness is so important I mean we're, we're look how long it took to realize that cigarette smoking caused cancer and before that was accepted um, right now, only about 2% of the chemicals that we use have been studied to see if they cause cancer. Um, so even if we're looking at everything carefully for labels, we're not necessarily going to know. I think that's where just really being aware ourselves that somebody's not standing here looking over our shoulders protecting us and, and shaking right, their right, finger, right. And, and we really have to, we have to do, our homework. do our homework. De stress. I mean, this is a given. De stress. De stress is important, and, and we've talked about this, Patty. And, and yeah. you, how many people do you see, and they have some major stressor six to twenty-four months earlier and develop cancer? Right. Um, right. There's stories everywhere. Um, there have been wonderful studies done out of Sweden on stress and increasing the risk of breast cancer. But this is not one of these negative, horrible things we can get excited because it wasn't objective stress. It wasn't the you know relationship changes and job changes that really didn't make a difference. It was Subjective stress, how stressed out you feel. And we can do something about that. We can work with stressors. Work with we can take mind. responsibilities and say, this is stressful in a relationship. They're not going to change. I can change myself this right, way. Right. Um, look at ourselves. We're mainly taking responsibility for your own thought patterns and, and, and how to uh, yes. deal with life as opposed to blaming everyone else. Right. Um, be your own advocate. Which is, goes back to your cousin's story. Be your own advocate yeah. first. You have to be your own advocate. And getting sleep, getting exercise, also in the medical world. I mean, we're looking at a lot of this information on CT scans, especially in children, raising the risk of cancer down the line. And the study of American College of Radiology said 2% of children are going to get cancer in their lifetime just from radiographic medical radiology studies. Right. Um, we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. I mean, a lot of those are really, really important. Right. Um, but ask questions. You know, if they, somebody recommends a CT scan. Would an ultrasound work as well? Right. Would it be just? Would it be fine if we waited three days? Right. Um, asking questions. You would with a plumber. 
they want to do one <laughs> procedure, you would say, well, you know, tell me about all these different right. things. And, exactly. you know, what, um, and it's your health and it's your life. It's our health and right. it's our life. Okay, the, 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 the fifth one we, we kind of know about, quit smoking. But if you don't smoke, check your home for radon. And radon is so under-talked about. Um, right now, we know everybody, lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer deaths for both men and women in the United States. Um, lung cancer kills almost twice as many women as breast cancer. But you know what? 20% of those women have never touched a cigarette. So and you can say what's the cause? Right. The second leading cause of lung, of lung cancer overall in the leading cause of non-smokers is radon exposure. Let's talk about and that because you created... It's just, it's a normal radioactive gas um, that comes up from the soil into our homes. One in 15 homes in the United States has elevated levels of radon. Um, it's easy to, easy to test for, cheap, and you 20 have, bucks you or have less. Five, and, you, oh, and, you, yes. and you created a wonderful list that made the New York Times and it became viral <laughs> and everybody's looked at this list. Tell me about the list because I think it's very interesting. Yeah, check your home for radon. Not because it's probably the biggest bang for your buck if you want to lower your risk of cancer, but number one, it doesn't take any willpower. That's right. Number one, you can do it. It's not like exercise How that you do every day. Do? How hard is it to check your radon levels? What do you have to do? Go to the corner store for 10 or $20. You can get a radon test kit. You send it out in your that home easy. for a day or two, send it in, and get the level. That's amazing. And, they let you, and there's repairs, and it talks about it if you need them. Um, but, yeah, but, yeah so yeah, easy. The first one is, is you, you, it, it does not take any willpower. It <laughs> doesn't take any willpower. No. And number two? And number two is you can do it once and forget about it. It's not I have to exercise half an hour a day for the rest of my life. You can check this, and you can be done. Exactly. You've got, Lord, your risk. Um, yeah. Number three, it's cheaper than therapy. That's right. Very expensive. <laughs> and plus treatment. Treatment if you get sick, and treatment. right? Uh-huh. And, and number four. Nobody will gossip. Yeah, nobody will <laughs> gossip. Nobody will be jealous about it, you if you do it. Um, you've done it, and yeah. That's right. Um, nobody has to get jealous. And another one is, you know, if your level is bad... It's not, that doesn't mean that you're a bad cook or a bad house cleaner or a bad mother or a bad father or a bad <laughs> exactly. friend. It doesn't exactly. mean the level's bad and somebody else can come in and fix it for you. Yeah, I think that's very interesting. I've never even heard anything about radon that much, though. That's good to know. Uh, Ten superfoods that you should have in your diet uh, yes. as much as possible to prevent cancer. Let's, let's go over those. Cruciferous vegetables. What a, f a funny name for uh, what? Yeah, cruciferous what vegetables cover a lot. And broccoli, we'll think. And even if you're a former president, you don't need broccoli to get <laughs> cruciferous vegetables. <laughs> you can radishes. There's kale. Um, spinach. There's, lots there's, of greens. Lots yeah, of greens. Your yeah. cauliflower, lots of different greens. And okay. big bang for your buck with those. Green tea. How much green tea should we be, should we be drinking every day? Green tea. And, you know, this is one thing. You do want to talk to your doctor because there's probably, you know, that one in thousand people that maybe shouldn't be drinking green, <laughs> green, tea. green, green tea. Um, I drink four cups a day or okay. else uh, some, something equivalent to that. Um, but there's studies on nearly every form of cancer showing reductions. They're studying it in the Mayo Clinic right now for people with cancer, um, combining it with different therapies. Um, it's linked a lot. And I like things where they've actually done the studies looking at the molecular part of it and how it probably has an effect on the cancer cell. But you can also look globally, and you can see these places, these countries where they drink a lot of green tea have a much lower risk of certain cancers. Right, it's an so antioxidant. Kind of couple, yeah, so it, it's it, an it antioxidant. does help. Berries, blueberries, blackberries, all kinds of berries. Berries what are wonderful. What do they have that uh, help us out? A bunch of chemicals that I don't want to... But the anti our minds with right now, but the antioxidants, the antioxidants. are wonderful. And it's, I, I think of the blue, blueberries and blackberries as the broccoli of the fruit family. And this they're is, also easy. They're, they're easy also, to throw yeah, them into smoothies. Right, I mean, that's, right. If you're looking how to cancer, that's your what kids. I do in the morning. I, I do yeah. a blueberry smoothie. <laughs> Garlic and onions. That's sort of a very much part of the Mediterranean diet, isn't it? Garlic and onions. Garlic and onions. And uh, yeah. And it doesn't take a lot of garlic and adding. And, you know, garlic and onions, and we can expand that. What we really have lost sight of with uh, talking about some of the superfoods that the Mediterranean brings in is all of the herbs. Oh, yes, yeah, very the important. the powerful punch in so many yeah. of these herbs that we can And I've add. heard turmeric is a very important herb, yes. right? Yes, It's an Indian herb, and it's very good. Pomegranates, too. Another pomegranates are, are fun, and really we see a great. lot of people juicing, a lot of the men now for prostate it's cancer. Kind of, it's kind Prevention. of popular. But, but it's also fun, and if you're also trying to work on your weight, to actually get the pomegranate fruit and take the time to pick them out, it slows you down, so you eat, so you eat less. <laughs> <laughs> olive oil. Olive oil. People don't think about that much, but it has really great qualities. Or it does. And it's, to prevent it's, cancer. 
It, it's kind of funny because you, now that now that we've talked about blue zones and these places right. where people live so long, and you see these hundred-year-old women climbing trees in Sardinia that are drinking a cup of olive oil a day. <laughs> That's I mean, it. We have and then to they think go about climb that. Climb a tree. That's right. <laughs> but but yeah, the omega threes and um, really looking at the oils we get. Um, corn oil, I don't no, get no, at no, all. No, no. I mean, sometimes I'll mix olive, a little canola oil and an olive oil, the combination, because it burns less. But we should really be looking at the oils we use. Right. Legumes. <laughs> Legumes. Um, probably 5% of us in the U.S. get enough beans. And this is wonderful being here in Houston. I absolutely yeah, love Yeah, because of the Mexican here. food, we eat, <laughs> yes. lot, we eat a lot more legumes. That's a right. A lot more legumes. Nuts, especially Brazil nuts and almonds. Why is that? They're very high in selenium. And it doesn't take much. Um, but sometimes you can two or three a day. That's and enough. Just packed with selenium. Mushrooms. And I would never expect mushrooms to be part of it. Mushrooms. And, and they, we've heard about the medicinal mushrooms in the past. And we know a lot of you know, the Chinese medicine they use it for different conditions. Um, very high with the antioxidants for cancer prevention. And we can look at the mayatake and shiitake mushrooms as being mm. you know, the, the real superfoods. But even our regular button mushrooms pack a big punch with antioxidants. Wow. Watermelon? Watermelon. People don't That's think of this. Fun. That's I love a fun it. I love fruit. it. It's so fun. We I didn't until recent studies have come out. I thought of watermelon as prop being healthy basically because you get a lot of water with it. Right, You're not gonna right. get dehydrated. But it's very high in um, some of the phytochemicals that apples are high in and the apple a day keeps the doctor right, away right, type right. of thing and um, watermelon is packed with those. That's interesting. Is it worth it to buy organic? Because we hear it's more expensive and everybody talks about let's buy organic. What do we know? Yes and no and there's two parts to that. Pesticide exposure um, and with this economy it's very expensive to buy all organic. It's fun. The Environmental Working Group and anybody who wants to Google it has come up with a dirty dozen. Um, and if you stick with Avoiding this or buying this dirty dot is an organic. You're going to avoid 80 percent of the pesticides in your diet. Okay, um, which That's is important. wonderful. And it's it's things with soft skin. It tends to be the peaches and the pears and apples and grapes and um, berries and um, lettuces. Um, but the other thing, I think we're going to learn a lot more about organics because some of the new studies are looking at the phytochemicals, these wonderful antioxidants as being part of the plant's immune system. Okay. So if we grow them non-organically, we're probably protecting them from creating some of these wonderful chemicals we want for our health. You so are you're also writing a book right now on breast cancer prevention. And there's some a lot of hope right now for women in breast cancer. There's there's a lot, both with prevention and prevention of recurrence, which thankfully we're finally looking at because that's such a fear for so many women. Um, and there's good studies out there. I wish we'd be hearing more. You, you about know about the, 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 the latest is targeted therapies, targeted right? Targeted therapies. Tell, explain what that is. This is so good for women to know that there's hope in the future because we think about chemotherapy and traditional chemotherapy is just killing everything that's dividing killing everything fast that's, right. and hoping that we catch... The, the cancer. The cancer that's mm -hmm. dividing fast as well. But the newer targeted therapies are designed for that specific cancer. So fewer side effects for the body and much more specific for the cancer. So I'm very excited in finding ways of testing and who will see, who will respond to different therapies. And, and women are responding better now to, to, um, to cancer treatment than they ever have before with breast cancer. We've made so, oh, many, so many So many strides. strides and with the side effects, so many strides. Now let's try to sum it all up. Just one of the three most important things to remember about uh, breast cancer, not breast cancer, cancer prevention cancer in general. Cancer prevention first. Number one is be smart, but be savvy. We talk about being environmentally aware, but... We talked about, I was thinking of something that's all natural, it's organic. If you grow it without pesticides, right. it's plant-based, it's low-fat, it's tobacco. Um, right, right, we don't right. want people using tobacco. So you've <laughs> got to realize that there can be a lot of um, mislabeling. And all natural doesn't necessarily I mean, it's mean, good. Right. mean much. And plant-based, hemlocks, plant-based, that doesn't necessarily um, mean that. Um, make it fun. And... My children have been in sports, and you see these kids, you watch them, and they're working out for two or three hours, and they work so hard, or they work an entire day skateboarding. And I've never seen them s sitting there thinking, you know, this is going to reduce my risk of cancer when I'm 50, or right. my coronary arteries are going to be cleaner when I'm 60. They're no. doing it because it's fun. fun. That's right. So what we've got to do is we've got, with, with the exercise and eating healthy, we've got to find a passion. We've got to make it fun. Mm -hmm. We've got to 
enjoy life. Okay. Um, and the last would probably be do something, anything. It doesn't have to be one of these, these to do. Does people say do the hardest thing on your list? That doesn't work for me because I just wouldn't do it at all. Or else you see have this whole list and it's overwhelming. You don't start. Do something simple. Pick up okay. a house plant. Walk up and down the stairs. Micro five times. micro steps. Micro How do you steps. know you're living smart? Listen to your body. Our bodies tell us. And I think we learn to unprogram them so that we can eat fast food and be sedentary and we don't feel it. But the more we take these tiny steps, the more we see how we feel good and we start to listen to our bodies. And then if we're sedentary or we eat fast food, we don't feel as good. Our bodies tell us. And you, you made some decisions that made, after you knew all you that you knew, you made some decisions to change your life, and, and, and you're doing great. So, it, well, thank you for writing all those books, and we appreciate you coming here. And all the way from Minneapolis, thank you so much. Thank you, Patty. <laughs> and to learn more about cancer prevention and nutrition, go to our website. There you'll find a complete resource list. You can also email us or call us with your comments at 713-743-8513. That's 713-743-8513. And that's our show for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Remember to live smart. I'm Patricia Grass. Have a healthy week. For a transcript of this program, send 695 to the address on your screen. Please include the name of the guest. Cancer kills about 1,500 Americans a day. What can we do to prevent it? What sort of lifestyle and diet changes do we need to make? How do we become more aware of carcinogens and toxins that cause it? Does exercise and sleep really make that much difference? Next on Living Smart.